So we're here at GovHack and this is John Althop who is the mastermind behind uh, GovHack in Canberra. We're of course in the awesome room 101 of the Computing Science and IT building at ANU. There's lots of memories for lots of people in this particular room. Now you've obviously had a pretty sleepless night but, but how do you think GovHack is going? This is the first time it's occurred in this country. You must be pretty proud of the buzz that's going on. And yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I guess the, the original kind of brief was, look, we've got 50 Plus people would be fantastic, you know, short term, just you know, pretty modest outcomes, I guess, in terms of the you know, government 2.0 task force and a GMO and so on. So we were pleasantly surprised with the amount of interest. I mean, we had 200 plus people register, we had basically turned people away, we, we've uh, basically had a ton of media interests, you know, the Australian and the Age and the Herald and radio interviews and, and so on. So the interest both within the community and outside the community has yes, been fantastic. And then to see the people, people up there all last night, we had about 20 odd folks last all night, the quality of what people are doing is amazing. Starting from zero, literally no one probably started with more than an idea. What they've actually managed to achieve in even, what, 12 hours or something. Yeah. And by the end of the 20 hour, 24 hour period, I, I think what people would achieve will be quite extraordinary. And the outcomes of GovHack, I know you're going to be doing presentations later on this afternoon, but what, what's the ongoing impact of this event? Do you think there'll be more? So I'd like to think so. I think, uh, well, in fact, there already are a number of plans. So Lonely Planet and GovHack are teaming up for an event like this down in Melbourne mm -hmm. next week. Uh, and then uh, Mashup Australia, oh, sorry, sorry, um, uh, Open Australia uh, and Google are holding an event up in Sydney next weekend. So there, there's some more events people can already get and, and get involved with. I think having run, this is probably the, the highest profile hack day that we've had in Australia and, and people are aware of them from around the world. But having run one, seen how it worked, I think other people will probably think, yeah, we can do that. And the same way bar camps really took off in Australia. Yeah. Right? I think that hopefully this will encourage people, not just in the government space, but more broadly to, to think about having hack days. Yeah, in fact, last time I think I was in this room, it was for bar camps, That's which right. is where Pia Law and I caught up again. There you um, go. Pia's and behind now she the camera. <laughs> And actually works I think I, I think I actually recruited her at bar camp here in room 101. So, so this room's got yeah some great history for me personally. Absolutely, as well. I think it's becoming a bit of an epicenter of you know like unconference, calm interaction between government and technology, at least at the grassroots level. Yeah, look, I think so, and um, look, three cheers for Bob Edwards who puts in a great effort. Absolutely, yeah. Poor, <laughs> poor Bob is constantly being asked to patch networks and provide more bandwidth and does it always with a smile and a bit of an avuncular yeah. good humour. So. Uh, John, can I say congratulations for what you've been able to achieve with GovHack. We've had a great time talking to different participants from Melbourne, from Adelaide, from all over the place who've come here because they're so enthusiastic and excited about the opportunity you've afforded. So congratulations. Oh, thank you, thank you. And I look forward to seeing the wonderful outcome. You bet. So we're here at GovHack. It's about oh, nearly 9 o'clock in the morning. This is Rob and he's been here pretty much all night long. And he's going to tell us what he's been working on. No. Um, so we've been processing the government data. Um, yesterday we took a, um, a script that walks through the catalogue of the data and makes the JSON representation, so structured data set that, so machines can walk that data set more easily. And then we've been working with some of the other people to take the uh, XML file from the National Archives that describes all the different agencies and uh, visualise the structure of government's different agencies. So how many are there? How many agencies are there? Uh, over 7,500. Um, I think it's from starting around the 1900s. That's amazing. So what do you, what do you hope to come, come up with by the end of the day? Um, some different visualisations so we can see how that structure has changed over time um, and see what the real structure is. I think it will be interesting to actually just be able to visualise government. Yeah, I, I think everyone has a sort of conceptual view of government through their experience with government, but I don't know if anyone's actually seen the whole picture. Mm -hmm. Working on the big picture. Yeah. <laughs> That's great, Rob. Thanks very much. Good. Okay, Adam, we're here at uh, GovHack in the morning. Um, have you had a long night? It's been a very long night. So far, it's, it's a night that started at 8am yesterday. Ah. So we're up to about 24 hours, and yeah. there's about another 10 to go. And how much coffee have you had? Not much, but many, many other things have happened. Yeah, so excellent. It's been, a, it's been a reasonably good night so far. Yeah, so what have you been working on? Uh, at the moment, we're trying to solve uh, uh, all of all the government. So we're trying to take all the parts of the data that government aren't allowed to mix with other parts of government and then combine them all together. Wow. 
So to take wherever you happen to be standing in the country and find out every member of parliament that represents you at every level of government. Right, so local government, state, Local, ward, federal. state, right. all the states, all the local governments, all House in one place. and Senate? Yes. Oh, yes. So all five to six houses, depending on which state you live in. And, and no one can do that yet, can they? I think the problem is they're constitutionally separated. Okay. You know, the, the, the state government land departments and the, the different you know, electoral commissions aren't allowed to work together. So a lot of what we've been doing is trying to find places where the government is not allowed to solve it and business has no interest in solving it. So it's up to people outside the government to solve it. So that's where Adam steps in and yeah. does the mash-up yeah. and solves that problem? It's a little more than a mash-up, this one. <laughs> but, but we've been working on this for a little while, but at the moment it's turning into a mash-up. It'll be a piece a piece of infrastructure that all the other mashups can pull in. So right. you can take a street address or where you happen to be standing off a, an iPhone or anything like that and turn it into a map into everything else. So you know, who you need to complain to, where you need to find the cops, who's responsible for the road in front of you, and, and solve that across so what all would the I, what, what yeah. would I? What sort of information, how much detailed information would I need to be able to access, say, a query about um, a federal government service? Um, in my area. Well, if we know if we know you're in a, a federal government service that's broken up by uh, by electric, yeah. then not much at all. Okay. Uh, we can take a suburb name, street address, a postcode, anything that says where you are. Yeah. So you and then it's just not work about out. exchanging personal information. Then it's really no, based on the location. Not. It's based on the location. It's not based on personal information at all. Okay. And then to work out everything the government does in your area where you are standing, yeah. or where you're hunting for a house, so you can work out. Which Captain school Benny each house it. is going to be, where the bus stops are, all that kind of stuff. Excellent. And, and did you think the government would ever sponsor an event like this, GovHack? There's, there's swirlings of it around the world. Um, the, the level of aggression is, is unexpected. I think there's definitely a level of sort of pace that, that we wouldn't have expected to see. Right. So people really want to get into this. Yeah, I think so. I think there's certainly a, a, a focus this year on, on pushing this forward and getting it as far as we can and then seeing what emerges and going from there. Yeah. Well, congratulations on your participation. We really look forward to the outcome. You're welcome. Yep. Jeffrey, what yes. have you been working on here at GovHack? Uh, my representatives.org. Oh, so yes. I'm, I'm a senator. What does that mean for me? Uh, hopefully more people will be able to find out who you are. Oh, <laughs> can I say thank you in advance? <laughs> so tell me how you're doing that. Uh, we're trying to combine, well, we are combining electoral data with geodata uh, and the GIS information that's provided by various government agencies using geocoding services. So you can put in a street address and find out who your representatives are at every level of government in the country. So along the whole stack, all three levels, um, find out where you live, what divisions you're in and who your representatives are. And do you, do you put the politicians' phone numbers in there as well? So um, give them a call? We could. Yeah. It's just a matter of collecting all the data and putting it together. Yeah. There, isn't actually, there aren't actually easy repositories of lists of politicians and their contact details around. Yeah, no, I know, because a, uh, a lot of politicians uh, have their own website mm -hmm. where you just get the, the official page mm -hmm. uh, in their respective uh, parliament yes. that hosts that information, so yeah. you probably have to uh, roll around and gather it up. And uh, it seems that a lot of politicians also have multiple sets of contact details between their electoral office, the parliamentary office, the various ministerial offices and what have you, so there might be five or six different places where you're supposed to contact them. Right. And right, I hadn't yeah. thought about that, but yes. you're absolutely <laughs> right. I've, I've got an electorate office mm -hmm. um, and I've got a Parliament House office and we, yes. we have both of those sets of information, and hopefully everywhere, but probably in some places just one and then in a... Yeah, you know, so, oh. so somebody's got a couple of ministries as well and they're from a large electorate, so they'll have a couple of electoral offices and, yeah. Oh. It's hard to uh, sometimes figure out where to go. No wonder people find it tough. Yes. Well, hopefully you'll you'll solve a few problems and put constituents in closer touch with their politicians. So that's got to be a good thing. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. We'll at least get the information out there and make it available for other services to use as well. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for that. And, um, I hope you've had a, a good night. Not too tired? Uh, past tired, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> into, yes. the, into the zone. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Well, listen, it's fantastic you're able to participate in GovHack. Um, it's, it's the first time it's happened. What do you think of that? Um, more I feel fortunate to live in a country where I can do these things. Um, you know, I'm just some guy and I'm able to engage in government information and talk directly, speak directly with a senator and what have you. There aren't a lot of places in the world where that sort of thing can happen. So 
um, you know, I feel remarkably fortunate every day to be in this country. Ah, well, and you're making a contribution to our democracy in a very active way. So yes. for that, thank <laughs> you, and um, have a great day at Gutpack. Thank you.